Chaz, we are live. Dustin, how are you doing today? It is a beautiful Monday in the in the world of an entrepreneur. Thank you guys for being with us. Once again, you are tuned in to the non-corporate network. You are watching Entrepreneurs. Dustin, you want to tell them a little bit about what we're doing here on Entrepreneurs? Yep, Entrepreneurs. So it's uh, entrepreneurial news for entrepreneurs from entrepreneurs. We take uh, six of the top headlines over the last uh, day or two. Um, and simply debate, and we give our take on whether we're for or against it. Uh, just give our perspective, but ultimately the goal is to deliver headlines to you in a way that's a little bit different than having to tune in every se- uh, every morning at 7 a.m. and uh, consume the content. Uh, we have it on YouTube. We're live. I mean, it's kind of kind of everywhere. So allowing you to consume or digest news whenever you want to. And you know, I uh, in a time where the media has kind of become a little bit of a shady character. And in a time when you may not want to watch 85-year-old news anchors on CNBC, we are here for you. Uh, With that, let's dive into it, our first story. Um, Again, we debate six of the top business stories for three minutes apiece. I usually give the better take. Dustin goes home crying. Um, so, uh, without further ado, are you ready to dive into the first story there, Dustin? Yep. Let's dive right in, Chaz. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So Twitter is testing a new feature that makes users read the blogs before sharing them to eliminate spreading headline mongering, as I put it, uh, essentially before you can retweet an article, before you put something out there, you actually have to click the link and land on the article. Oh my gosh. Shocker. You would think that people are already doing this, but Twitter reported that 60% of people that share articles don't even click it and read it. They don't even land on the the website for five seconds. Dustin, what do you think about this story? And uh, what do you think needs to happen here? Is this a good plan for Twitter? Yeah, no, I I think it's great. I mean, there's too many. I mean, with the number that you just mentioned, there's so many people that just read a headline, which we know are uh, uh, completely constructed to kind of um, lead you down a path, but do- doesn't get the full story. And so you have a lot of people that are just retweeting or sharing the news, giving their two cents on it without even reading what everything right. is about. And so there's so much misinformation being shared. Um, I'm interested. I mean, is it just the click? Is it that people have to stay on for 10 seconds or more? Um, I mean, what where my mind goes is, and I don't know if you know Twitter is hosting all the the different articles and stuff like that. But I mean, there's a huge part of SEO where you have dwell time or how long people are staying on the page. So are they helping that? Um, I doubt it. I think it's more of the just misinformation sharing. Um, But it'll be cool to see how it impacts just how much news gets out there and what type of news is getting out there. Um, But what are your thoughts? You know, you bring up a good point with SEO comparison. Google's algorithm is absolutely incredibly sophisticated beyond any of our um, understanding and you know they've put so many layers in over the years in terms of this dwell time and what things prove that this article was helpful because sometimes people are going to a website and they only need to be there for 10 seconds and they get the the answer they're looking for and they're gone and so we want to be promoting those things and those websites that give you exactly what you need but there's a lot of times where you know Google can actually tell, okay, this person's clicking through multiple websites. It's telling me they still haven't found the right answer. So, I mean, in terms of taking some of that technology and embedding it into social media and content consumption, I think is interesting. I mean, uh, I'm going to, from Twitter support, they uh, tweeted and said, sharing an article can spark conversation. So you may want to read it before you tweet it. (laughs) To help promote informed discussion, we are testing a new prompt on Android. So this is only on Android, just keep in mind. But when you retweet an article that you haven't opened on Twitter, it would ask if you want to open it first. So, um, you know, I think that, you know, for some of us, this is like, well, why why the heck would you ever retweet an article you didn't click on? Again, 60%. This isn't just the media companies that are giving us these headlines that are scaring the hell out of us. This is also people that I've got my own timer over here. This is also people that are just making this content viral without even reading it. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. Now, it, I think it's going to be a good thing. I wonder if it'll impact overall uh, user consumption and how they use Twitter. Yeah. Might have people that leave. So it'll be interesting to see how that, that p- plays out. 
exactly. I agree with you. Um, okay. Amazon, they have a drone free, uh, a drone fleet. And uh, if you guys haven't heard of Prime Air, get familiar. There's 20,000 drones active right now in Amazon's network delivering packages. By 2026, that number is projected to be over a million. Dustin, what do you think of having a million drones flying around delivering packages? Well, I mean... <laughs> Drones are pretty loud, so it's uh, it'll be interesting to see what the or yeah, not right. see one. It'll be interesting to see what a million drones across the United States looks like, but also the the sound of it. Uh, it'll just be one loud hornet's nest. Um, but I mean, I, overall, I mean, I it'll it'll be interesting to see how they deploy it. I mean, one right. people are talking more about uh, the ozone um, and all that type of stuff. So I mean, you're gonna have less vehicles out. Um, polluting so there, there's a couple positives that i think it could impact but there's a lot of implications that uh could happen as well uh for example i mean how do airplanes navigate the air um right. around airports and stuff i mean i have a house right next to phoenix Air airport um so i mean would i be able to get stuff delivered there um i'm glad to see that they're kind of rolling it out with i think what 15 20 000, um right. drones now a, right before the yeah. you know they get to a million uh, <laughs> unleash the drones um so what are your thoughts on all this i mean you know it's pretty crazy man i i think that again it's just another testament to amazon with their millionth business falling under the amazon brand name and uh, you know, I think that we can just throw the antitrust policy in the trash can at this point if we haven't done anything right now. So that's always going to be my first stance. But, you know, I think it's a risk, too. You know, uh, these drones have cameras on them. And, oh, big surprise, Zoom, get, or Zoom getting some competition from Amazon now coming at the video conferencing with their Slack partnership that we talked about last week. So, I mean, I look at it and I go, facial recognition. The drones have cameras on them. Amazon isn't above the law. They're probably working with the government. Now we're going to have surveillance on everybody at all yeah. times with a million drones flying around. It's like, I, it blows my mind. Um, so, I mean, I hope there's some kind of regulation. I hope that we as American people stay woke as this gets rolled out because they can pull a fast one on us real quick without us knowing. And all of a sudden now uh, we're just getting followed around all day. Not that we aren't already with our phones, but it's just, it's a risk to me from a data perspective. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what the, the insurance policy looks like on that. I mean, uh, would hate to see what, <laughs> yeah. what the repercussions are cruising over a, a freeway. It falls right. and now you have a 32 car pile up, um, all because someone wanted, uh, <laughs> their dipping dots or whatever it may be. Um, <laughs> you heard dots on Amazon, Dustin? <laughs> I have no uh, idea why it was the first thing that came to mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you know, I, I, uh, I can't, I can't stray too far from your disagreement on that. I think it's, uh, it, it it's, it's hard to, it's hard to debate. Cool. Um, As getting usual, our next Chaz story here. agrees with me. <laughs> Uh, getting into our next story here, more workers putting the squeeze on their companies to support Black Lives Matters. It's turned into a PR stunt, Dustin. I'm going to come out and say it. Um, I think that uh, I think that the ethos of the Black Lives Matters movement is absolutely something that needs to be taken seriously. Uh, but we've kind of turned it into a, a social media war. And if you're not saying something, you're being scrutinized. If you are saying something, you're being even more scrutinized. Um, and so it, it's really it, it's really crazy to see. I mean, just a couple of examples I'll give you. Um, there were some protests at Microsoft internally. They ended up donating one point five million dollars because of it. Slack had to retract an article that they published um, talking about the support of the police uh, force. Um, the community activists at Facebook HQ uh, of Menlo Park are saying, hey, you need to stop supporting the police officers in Menlo Park, IBM. Um, they said that they were getting out of the facial recognition game, but then they still have a partnership with the police force. So it's like there's so much intertwined and it, it's turning into something where it's like, OK, if you have a relationship with the police force or you have a relation or you're in a uh, industry where you're doing facial recognition, all of a sudden it's like your stock price just plummets because that's where you you decided to go as a business or what are your thoughts as it relates to this kind of uh witch hunt of anything you say is going to be taken the wrong way and you're walking on shards of glass at all times as a business 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think, to your point, people are doing it for headline reading and uh, for PR stunts. I mean, I think people are just, well, what do people want to see from us? And that's what we're going rather than what do we really feel? I think the term humanizing your brand hasn't been uh, more important than than ever before and figuring right. out how to, to make your brand relatable. I mean, you don't have to come out and say I'm for or against, but again, what are your values? What's your mission? How are you approaching that? I mean, uh, Starbucks, they, they said that none of their employees can wear any BLM apparel. Their stock prices took a huge hit. They got a bunch of backlash. They then reversed and said it's okay. And on top of that, they're buying, I think, $2 million worth of apparel for their employees. So, I mean, that's a prime example of we don't know what we stand for. We're just trying to figure out what's going to make everyone make happy. happy. And, and right yeah. now, you can't make everyone happy. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I think another thing that's interesting to mention, too, is that uh, Adidas and Reebok came out and said they're going to be hiring 30% of their hires will be African-American or Latino. And I mean, you know, obviously we're all in support of diversity, but mandating the ethnicity of certain hires, I think, is, again, backwards. And I, I don't think that that is along the same lines of what Black Lives Matter is trying to do. They're not looking for preferential treatment. They're not looking for treat us differently or treat us better because of the color of our skin. It's really just like, let's find some equality and some common ground as human beings and and not judge people by the color of their skin. So I think that it it's not necessarily like solving the problem by doing things like that, which Again, I think it's more just let's create a headline to make people happy and show that we're in support of this. But it's just, you know, it, it's hard. It, it's a hard time that we're living in in terms of how we decide what moves to make as a business. But uh, it's it's crazy to see what's happening right now. Yep. No, couldn't agree more. Uh, so going on to our next uh, topic, some more time is being spent by U.S. adults on messaging apps that includes Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp and apps of that nature, all while normal telecommunications are kind of going down. So less people are picking up the phone and calling someone and doing more video calls, uh, sending gifts, sending memes, whatever it may be. There's a lot more things that you can say or how you can interact between these apps. And so, right. I mean, there's a, there's a couple different things to think about. One, I mean, what's going to happen to the telecom industry? Two, how are brands getting in front? I know Facebook allows you to uh, use Facebook Messenger as a placement. So getting your brand in front right. of where people are actually engaging. Um, but I mean, overall, what are your thoughts on on this overall trend of, of people using messaging apps uh, a bit more? Yeah, we saw this happen in China already. We're seeing it happen in India currently. I mean, people are flocking to places like WhatsApp. They're flocking to places like WeChat internationally uh, to replace you know, going and making a phone call. And, and I think it's, uh, I think there's positives and there's negatives, right? I think the positives are, hey, there's now opportunity to sell pickaxes to gold miners as it relates to people coming to these messaging apps. You know, I think it's interesting um, and it provides an opportunity for businesses. But with that same point, you know, you bring up the telecom companies, is that healthy competition? Are we eliminating one monopoly and creating another one? Now everybody's going to be on Facebook instead. We already have enough Facebook usage as it is. So now they're going to control more data. Now they're going to control more video feeds. Now Facebook owns WhatsApp too. It's going to become synonymous where your entire world revolves around Facebook only. And while I'm not a huge AT&T or Verizon fan or, you know, we just saw T-Mobile and Sprint merge, um, I, I look at it and I say, you know, that we have, we're going to have another behemoth like Amazon in the um, in in this space where social media becomes, you know, communication. And there's no more, there's no difference now. It's just social media is your communication. So I think that's a risk. Uh, and I mean, I don't understand why the telecom companies aren't opening their eyes and saying, "Man, the opportunity is huge." There's True. pretty much everyone across the world will say, "Man, Facebook is collecting so much data. I don't want to have to yet." enroll in another app that Facebook doesn't collect my data. Therefore, there's a huge pain point and a huge problem. Any good industry that brings a good solution is going to take off. So if any of these telecom com 
uh, companies can just identify that and come up with a solution that and, and really go to market with we're not collecting data or however they want to figure that out. But I think yeah. there's a lot of opportunity if, if, you know, there's only one company that's overtaken the whole messaging uh, industry. There's a lot more room for competition. It's it's you can't force people to communicate how you want them to instead see how they're wanting to and then figure out how to create a value add compared to what's out there in the market. I mean, yeah. it's it's simple business one on one. It's in, the buzzword is encryption, you know, and you keep hearing that and who knows what that means. You know, it could mean, <laughs> I, I don't know what it means, you know, <laughs> it could mean, oh, we're, it's like, it's like McDonald's saying that they have a hundred percent ground beef patties, but it's because the farm name is hundred percent ground beef. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So on to our next story. So 86% of small businesses have experienced uh, some sort of technical difficulty whenever it comes to their their uh, communications, basically having IT problems. So virtually every small business faced something in the last uh, couple months. Um, Want to go over some stats that they mentioned um, where 23% say they're having issues uh, with group communication, such as uh, live chats, basically come together as a team where 20, 24% are having issues just managing the workforce remotely. So a lot of it comes down to, to communication um, and more so 31% say they're communicating less. So there's a couple different things going on. One, people aren't understanding how to communicate with each other. People are communicating less. And of the communication that's happening, there are more errors that are happening. Ultimately, there's no digital or remote infrastructure being uh, rolled out with these businesses. So, I mean, to me, there's a huge opportunity, one, for businesses and an industry to be made where we could provide a turnkey solution, give you the apps, the tools, the process on how to work remote, um, especially as we head forward through this pandemic and, and afterwards. Uh, but what are some of your thoughts on on these overall numbers? Yeah, I mean, you know, there is a little bit of white space. I mean, you look at Upwork, Fiverr, places like that. It's like you don't really have the quality control. And uh, so I think it's interesting. But, you know, since when does having more meetings mean more productivity? I, I look at this as something where it it's if you're tied up in meetings all day talking about stuff, when are you going to get something done? And for me, you know, there's plenty of examples of remote teams that have worked extremely well. I mean, there's a company called Hotjar that uh, pretty much they own 60 percent of the market as it relates to this uh, whole um, reporting on website traffic. And their team is fully, um, fully remote. And also they've subscribed to something called asynchronous communication where, you know, not everybody's on Slack at the same time. People are in different time zones. It's because they've got such robust uh, processes that are very, very articulated as to every single step that they're not wasting time. They're not, they don't have to sit in meetings to talk about things because it's already been laid out. And so I think that, uh, you know, there's something to be said about how less time in meetings and less time communicating can lead to a greater output if you're organized. Yeah. And I think, uh, I mean, I hear you on the meetings, but I think there's something to be said about Let's stop having one hour meetings because 45 minutes are just uh, sitting around asking what you ate for dinner yesterday and all that. More seven to 15 minute meetings that just get to the point. What is everyone doing? What's, what are the struggles? What are the roadblocks? Um, I mean, if you're already doing that, it's tough to cut more time out. But I mean, I've just over the years, I've sat in so many meetings where at the end, I'm like, man, this the 60 minutes could have been done in seven Um and then you don't have all that time taken out of your day from all these different meetings. I think uh, there, there, there's a huge opportunity there, but more so, I do agree with what you said. There's a lot of opportunity in just thinking through process and how, how you communicate. I'm racking up the wins today. <laughs> I'm being nice. It's Monday. So <laughs> on to our next story, Skyroam, um, Solus. They're a, they're a device company that provides uh, basically a mobile hotspot. So um, with them, you can you can get data either by the month or by the gigabyte. So, for example, you can pay five bucks for three gigabytes worth of data, and you can connect up to ten devices. Um, I think this is huge. I try and use my phone as a hotspot when I'm out and about, but when I got Google Analytics going, Google Ads, all all the different apps, it really slows down. Um, and they're saying that the the speeds are much greater than what your mobile hotspot is. Um, I mean, as we've been talking, just there's more remote stuff. If uh, teams want to go out to maybe a park and go work um, somewhere, where there's no Wi-Fi. They can just 
shoot this thing up, um, turn it on, and then everyone up to 10 people would then have connectivity. Um, I mean, I'm kind of kind of wondering about the name. Um, I, I think the industry, there's a lot of opportunity, whether this is the company that, that moves yeah. forward and, and kills it. I don't know about that, but I mean, what are your thoughts on, on this overall? Um, it's going to acquire them. Somebody's going to slap a brand name on that hockey puck and take it to the moon, <laughs> baby. I mean, I think that this is interesting for sure. I mean, Peter Thiel talks a lot about how monopolies are healthy because they promote innovation and and it's all about getting toppling the top guy off of the the pedestal. Um, and in this scenario, I think it can be healthy in the sense that you've got a few internet providers out there, and you're going to be tethered to your house or to your office. And we're seeing that cars are starting to come out with Wi-Fi networks, which allows you to still have Wi-Fi outside of the office. Again, now you're using less LTE, less data. So it's like you're you're this this is something that is going to um, again take a shot at the telecom companies as well as at the internet providers, uh, and I think it's it's great, especially you talk about remote work. Like I can go out to the probably not you probably don't want to go to the Tonto Forest right now with the fires. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can go sit in the middle of the nowhere and and get work done and. Um, you know, I think that that's an attractive lifestyle for a lot of millennials now is having the laptop life, not being tethered to a certain location. And so this really empowers people to be able to kind of step outside of the norm and um, and kind of disrupt their day a little bit, which I think is awesome. Yeah, I mean, you bring up the Internet service providers. I'm excited to see what this will do. I mean, especially if, if they introduce uh, 5G. I mean, we're stuck with uh, CenturyLink and I cannot voice it enough how much I hate being tied to them and I have no other choice. But if these devices come out and I mean, it's tough for us because we're doing a lot of video and choose up a lot of data. But if there is some type of solution to where I could pop in a device here and not have to use CenturyLink, I am all for it. Even even if I had to pay a couple extra dollars just because it is it is there's always an hour hour phone call anytime I have to reach out to them. It's just it's horrible. And so the innovation is going to yeah. bring a lot of good for the consumer and I'm excited for it. Hey man, it sounds like uh, it sounds like your relationship with CenturyLink is similar to my relationship with Yelp. <laughs> yep, yep. I've literally we gone to Twitter a couple times to to voice the frustration. <laughs> We both have a good relationship with Avantage. Yes, we do. Uh, Avantage is a, a great place to fill your excess capacity. If you are a small business and you are trying to not burn cash, but you got to get some things done, whether it's legal help, accounting help, I always use those examples, but I promise you there's a million other uh, examples on Avantage looking for a marketer, looking for a social media influencer to promote your business. You can find these people on Avantage.com. Check it out. Sign up for an account. You get $150 of free credits just for getting on there. All you got to do is set up an account. It's free money, people. So check out Avantage.com. They crush it. Thank you guys for being supporters of Entrepreneurs. And uh, once again, you guys have been tuned into the non-corporate network. Dustin, do you have anything you want to um, let the people know about before we get out of here today? No, I just appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, we'll be live again this Wednesday um, where Chaz will... We'll be torn apart. That's all I got. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we're not going to end on that. So I'll say one more thing here. If you guys have ideas for stories that you want to share with us, please send them over to us. You can find us on NCN Broadcast. You can find us on all the social media platforms. And if you're interested in starting your own show on the non-corporate network, you want to keep people woke about something that you're an expert in, whether it's finance or uh, venture capital or – cooking you know it doesn't matter check us out ncn broadcast fill out the form and uh you could have the next show on uh on the channel so we're excited about that but again thank you guys for being with us this has been entrepreneurs signing off until to wednesday not to tomorrow. wednesday till wednesday i will see you guys bright and early again my name is chaz vandermater dustin trout thank you for being with us